Okay, so um, has anyone heard of this thing called keyframes by Facebook? Anyone? Yes. Oh, yeah, okay, sure. So basically what I'm going to talk about is basically just uh, like Facebook released this like, uh, hang on, let me just launch my keynote. Okay. Okay, before that, let me just introduce myself. I'm Tim. I'm the product lead and also iOS engineer at Wanda together with Nitesh. Um, so today I'm going to be talking, I'm just going to be talking about keyframes, this little tool that Facebook created to create um, high quality scalable animations. So what it, what it is, is basically um, um, Facebook uh, needed to create like uh, these sort of like animations for their Facebook app. And so they had to figure out how to do it because there were um, a lot of issues uh, that, they, that they faced trying to come out with this. So like, uh, let me just go through quickly what the, some of the challenges were um, for Facebook. So one of the things that they wanted was for those like tiny icons to be resizable because you actually can hover over it and it becomes bigger. So they needed to figure out how to make it like uh, resizable. Another thing they had to uh, figure out was how to keep the quality high as it resizes because usually with bitmap, bitmap images when we resize we resize it it becomes like really jagged at the edges and so they um, wanted to figure out how to how to do this um, high quality way and so also to solve the problem of file sizes because we know that animated gifs pngs and sequences and all that um, if you add it up it becomes pretty big so they um, basically these are the three things that they wanted to do uh, solve for animations. Um, so some of the existing solutions that they sort of like research, um, first of all, like PNGs and GIFs, animated GIFs, um, was uh, some of those, was some solutions that, that are already existing. Um, and another one they looked at was uh, this format called SVG, which is a short form for scalable vector graphics. So it's basically instead of Instead of the image being um, described by pixels, it's being described as uh, by vector. And so um, another thing they came across was this uh, tool called Body Moving, which is uh, in essence uh, an After Effects plugin, uh, which translates animation in After Effects to um, JavaScript HTML. And so they, but then they did not want to use this because the, the tool actually um, exported a lot of metadata which they didn't need. So basically they just took inspiration from this tool and they created their own and it's called keyframes. Um, so what keyframes essentially is, is just an After Effects script which um, exports your composition in After Effects into a JSON file. So it being a JSON file, it's actually really small because it's just, you know, just text. And so, um, yeah, like I said, it just exports shapes and transform like uh, like transform code uh, in After Effects into uh, a JSON file. And so, and also they provide a library uh, for iOS and Android to, how say, sort of decipher this JSON file and, and translate it into core animation uh, so we can use it on iOS. And so this is an example of the JSON file that you, that's exported. It's actually very readable and you can actually change stuff in here, like color and all that things as well. But for the most part, you don't really touch this. Uh, everything from After Effects uh, comes up into a, a files like this. And so um, this is a code in iOS. So basically, they've created a library called KF, uh, KF Vector. So KF Vector is basically a vector object. So basically, um, this, this piece of function loads uh, the JSON file and uh, basically serializes it into a dictionary where they have a method called k vector from dictionary which sort of translate that into a, a vector object. And so to create an animation, it's like pretty simple. It's just creating a UI view um, and then loading the vector from this actually, um, uh, then you, you actually put the vector into a layer uh, called k vector layer and then you just add it as a sub layer of a button or an image or any any like uh, UI kit object, and that this will basically create the the animation, load the animation into the you know to the uh, UI kit object. Um, so um, 
before we go into the code, uh, I'll just say a bit about some of the like current issues with the with uh, with the tool and some limitations. So, uh, one of the limitations is that there there is actually um, a very little that you can actually do in After Effects. I mean, if you guys have used After Effects, has anyone like tried After Effects before? Because it's actually a very like sophisticated sophisticated tools like Photoshop, where there's a lot of things you can do. But for this purpose, you can actually use a very, very, very small subset of the abilities of it. So you have to be aware of it, because if you try to export like a very complex like animation, it won't work. So it will just fail. Um, so the library is also very simple. You can only just start, pause, resume, and seek for the animation. Um, and of course, it's also a work in progress. So they released this like maybe just a couple of weeks ago. So it's uh, pretty new, but it, it kind of works, and it's actually quite simple. And it's probably good enough for most purposes. Um, so this, this is the sort of animation that um, Facebook uses. And with After Effects, you can do things like particle effects. And you, know, um, you can do stuff that looks complicated, but actually, if you break it down, it's pretty simple. So let's, uh, basically, this is the, you know, the GitHub. You can check it out. There's like basically everything I've just said is all explained here as well. And so I guess let's just get to um, animating this. So um, basically, what I'm going to do right now quickly is just to, um, you know, Nitesh's like uh, um, game screen where he has this like uh, like the start screen where he has this like button. I'm just going to make an animated version of that. So um, just quickly show you the. So the process for this for me is usually you would create like a, a, a graphic in let's say sketch or for me I'm using this um, tool called Affinity Designer. So, so what I did was something like this, you know. So basically, it's just quite simple. It's basically just a couple of layers of objects. So this is like the background, and this is just a, a line, and this is a line. And this is just another ellipse, just to give like tiny shine thing to it. So basically, you export this as each each of these um, shapes as separate layers. And you know, once you have this as a separate layer, um, like uh, for example, yeah. So basically, like separate layers like this. You know, I just name it A, B, C, D. Uh, yeah, and so something like that. So you bring it into After Effects. So this is a. Uh, pretty big. So yeah, it might be a bit cramped. So yeah, this is After Effects and uh, it's kind of hard to see. Cause it's so this is, um, hang on, let me just resize this. Okay. Okay, so bringing it to After Effects, you see all the layers here. And it's actually um, composed into one composition. So a composition is basically um, just a, uh, a workspace where you basically put all the layers in. And basically, when you have the layers in, it's all these different shapes. So what you would do here, basically, composition has an element of time as well. So basically, you can, you, I can just play it, and then it'll go. Uh, like basically, I'll just you know, it'll just do something like that. Like this is uh, just one second, so it'll just loop over and over again. So in order to create animation, it's uh, pretty simple. So um, you just basically go to each of your layer, and you can adjust things like scale, for example. So you just add some keyframes at the start, and another one at the back, which is exactly the same. And then maybe you just add one in between to sort of like you know change the size of the you know the, the animation. And also you um, you can add like the good thing about using After Effects is that you have more control over the animation in terms of the easy in and the, the basically the animation curve. So something like this, you can see it's an animation curve, so it makes it look more realistic. So it's a bit like easy in, ease out for you know spring animations and all that. And so some of the limitations are in this as well. So you can't do more complex like uh, curves. So you can't do curves like this, you know, for example, because uh, the the tool will just fail. Yeah, so. So this is uh, just an example of the curve. So basically, you just have to do this for every single layer. So like this one has uh, a scale and a rotation as well. And so after you're done, all you have to do is just, um, you know, hold your 
just go to your compose and then you just go to your scripts and then you just go to this tool called face FB keyframes and then you just export it and basically I'll do everything for you and what this will do is it will output it will output a few files like this these three files but you actually only need one which is this one that, that has a KF in it so the rest you can just delete you know it doesn't really matter so you can just rename this so this is JSON file I, I like I show you so you can see that so you can just rename them something like you know like NM or something I already have something like this so I've put it in uh, a folder in Nitesh's code so yeah you see the start button NM.json it's the same thing actually so let me just show you how that looks like in the app mm. yeah so you just import it in like a JSON file so it's basically really just a JSON file and it's really small so if you want to look at the file size it's pretty much you know like how big is it and now it's just 12k it's for an animation which is pretty cool so let's go back to the Xcode so this is the thing and you know basically uh, the code I showed you earlier uh, loading the vector from disk that's here um, and then just adding it pretty much um, like similar to what I showed you except it has some um, constraints here just to get it to be in the center or a specific area in the screen so basically that's it I'll just uh, just show you how it looks like what else yes. sorry yeah actually it would be great as it will be as a great replacement for uh, for like images like PNGs and all that although you know um, uh, mm, you still have to manage, you know, you, you still have to manage like, uh, you know, like it's great because you can resize things and it becomes like, you know, it can scale really well. Do you drag the images to the asset? No, you don't. You, that's the thing, you don't use the asset folder at all. Because these are JSON files, um, so, you know, Xcode doesn't recognize JSON files as images. So, yeah, it's just, uh, so basically, okay, this is, uh, so basically I just replaced it with this. So you can actually use this in a normal UI kit, but I'm just de demonstrating this here, you know, just so I can co connect with uh, Nitesh's presentation. So this is just a, it's just a UI view on top of, uh, of Nitesh's game controller. So, you know, something like that. So you can actually do a lot more complex animations. Currently, what I'm showing you, you can actually do all of this in core animation uh, quite easily. But imagine things that are more like, uh, you know, like characters and all that, or more complex shapes, you know, like shapes which are uh, more organic. You can actually animate those kind of uh, things. And, you know, and it's basically scalable, so you can make it really huge, really small, and it's all very small. So this is um, Facebook's keyframes. Um, you guys have any questions? So you mentioned about skills, but does it have like 2x, 3x? How does it work? No, it doesn't have any 2x or 3 You just, you just set the size, like you know, like you just set the size in your, in your, like okay. Let's say I'll just make this really big. It's just basically really just depending on size, you know, one, like, you know, like make it 1.5 times bigger or something, and then you just run it. So, so it really has no concept of like 1x, 2x, or 3x. It is literally just a vector graphic. You can scale it up, like you just set this, your CG rec to be like 2000 by 2000 and it will scale up to that without losing, how to say, any, any quality because it, it is a vector graphic. Okay, I don't know what's happening here. Is it launching? Okay, so I just, you know, I just made it really big and it's still pretty high quality because the position is a bit off. But it's a, you know, it's a, it's a pretty good solution to what Facebook wanted to go. So it's basically like paint code. If you have used paint code before, you know it's, it's just basically drawing in the app and the app exports like the actual description in call graphics. So this is like the animation version of paint code using After Effects. So, you know, it's just a script for After Effects. But you still have to get After Effects, which is uh, very expensive.
Any question? Any kind of library that you can use the same JSON file to have the same kind of animation on Android? Any library from Facebook or the No, this, yeah. this is available on Android as well. Okay. So that one file, that JSON file, um, you can use that same file for uh, Android or for iOS. You just have to get the appropriate library. Yeah. So the library that Facebook provides for uh, for Android um, converts it to the appropriate, like you know, like I don't know what what is called in Android. So it's the exact same thing, you know, because they needed this for Android as well. You know, Facebook has an Android oh, yeah, app. Okay. Yeah, so, so that's basically it for me. If you guys have no more questions. So the advantage of using this is that it can be used cross platform. I mean you can use it cross platform for sure, yeah. I mean I wouldn't say it's an advantage, it's just Facebook built it for, for themselves. And so they of course support Android as well. So they they built like you know, built it for, for Android as well. Yeah, but yeah, it is cross-platform, just like for, just like images, images technically are cross-platform. <laughs> you, you, you know there's an app that, uh, whereby you can put in animation and the output for you, the core animation works for you. Have you tried on on uh, MacBook app? Uh, of course, called pin code or something. No, that's why I was just talking about uh, pay code. Oh, pay code. But pay code is not really animation, it's more just uh, images. So what it does is, that's why I say this is more like the animation version of pay code. So pay code is just an image where it's just a vector graphic. And then it exports as like a core animation code. You just copy and paste it on the next code. And you get the same thing. So, yeah. Can you program the animation? Program? Um, or is, is it just a looping image? You can do a loop, you can do a single uh, non-looped version as well. But let's say if I want to animate a clock and then I want yeah. to set that, okay, oh, set the clock at 2pm, can you? Uh, oh, so that's, that's what pain code is for. So pain code you can actually like program behaviors. So when you move a, a certain like a slider or something, then the the, 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 the graphic will move. So that is more like behaviors. So this one specifically was set up, like uh, Facebook did this specifically to solve uh, the problem of just pure animation. Like those delightful sort of animations they have, like the, you know, the reaction thing. So those, they don't really need it to be programmed because they want their designers to be able to work. So their designers mainly work in like software like After Effects because it's, uh, you know, it's easier to program. Uh, it's easier to do the work in After Effects than to do the code purely in core animation and all that. So, so that's why they chose uh, this path. Uh, so yeah. Thank you.